was nominated for the Gamer Awards. Yep, I was nominated for the most awesome gamer. <laughs> Folks, we're not going straight to the gamer's den, I'm afraid. We are going straight to the painter's den. Because, that's right, it's Mary Hands painting party. Oh my gosh. This ain't your daddy's painting class. That's right. It's the only show in the world where we all get to paint. Mm -hmm. It's true. Mm -hmm. Well, well, well. If it isn't. It's, it's a little dog. Oh. He's doing his thing. So, the theme today is Celestial Seasonings. And I thought that was a good theme because, you know, who doesn't love Celestial Seasonings? And also, I got asked to paint a picture of a dog named Star. So, you know, <laughs> Stars are celestial. So, okay, what are the rules of the show? I guess I should do a little bit of mousekeeping. Mousekeeping, what's that? Mousekeeping is where I tell you the rules of the show and there's a mouse in the corner sweeping a broom. So I paint, you paint, but you don't have to paint. You could lurk or you could draw or do, you know, another kind of medium. Like you could do embroidery or, or mm, anything really. And send us your art and then we'll screen share it. And then everyone will be like, oh my God, you're so talented. And you'll be like, wow, this rocks. I'm so glad I drew tonight and shared it with everybody. Um, yeah. So, you can post your art on any social media with the hashtag Mary Painting Party and tell us where you posted it so we could find it fast and screen share it. Um, you could also email it to us at maryhoolahanxoxo at gmail.com. Mm -hmm. Alice wants a polo shirt with the mouse keeping mouse on the front like a Lacoste alligator. <laughs> That's a good idea. Okay, let's see. Let me pull up a picture of Star the dog. Mm. 
You know, this painting was commissioned by a friend of the show, Justin Linville. It's true. Justin knows a dog named Star. So like, what's new everybody? Alice is going to Vegas tomorrow for work. No way. Yeah, the video game I work on is putting on a big event and they're sending us all out to Vegas. What you gonna do? Uh, I'm gonna watch and I'm gonna meet people who play our game and wear a bunch of ridiculous clothes because that's really why the only reason I like going to Vegas. So I, I want to start doing, why is their hair so big? Folks, I'm going to start doing a thing where I give shout outs. Yup, can you believe it? If you support the show on Patreon at the five or $10 level, I give you a little shout out. So, oh wait, I don't want to share that. Okay, yeah, I just want to share that one. And then, okay, because then I don't want you to see this list of everyone. Okay, this show wouldn't be possible without viewers like you. That's right. Mary Williams Painting Party is sponsored by Shelby Farrow. Ooh, she rocks. Elizabeth Davis. Oh my goodness. More like uh, Elizabeth is cool. James Draper. Ooh, he put the. He, he's, he's like Don Draper, but better. New York, uh, usernames New York. Tim Gray, he's like Alex Gray, but named Tim. Radio Free Multiverse, ooh, that's cool, that's a cool, oh man, I should get, I should get them five dollars. Brian Wall, wow. Uh, uh, Ceilings, forget it. I want Wall, Brian Wall, Sarah Cuda, Sean Elliott, Kyle Maroney, my aunt Pat, Slappy Phil, Elliot H, 
Michael Baginski, Duncan F, J for Austin, ooh, that's a yummy name, Calicia Hubbard, Hayden K, Nick Ryan of Montana fame, Robert Long Foreman, the name's so nice, they gave him three of them, Calla Knights, oh, that's Stephen D. Sienna. Bernardo, Jeff H, Josie, Alex, G, Sam, Juan, Suarez, Lodgy, Lee Alcoin, Bob Pruss, Hayden Mower, the letter V, Seth Simons, James Savage, cool name, Brady King, my sister Kate, Peter H, Michael Wynn, Brandon H, Brian Willis, and Vic Berger 4. Wow, thanks guys for supporting the show. If you want a cool shout out, uh, maybe, I'll, maybe I'll come up with cuter, <laughs> cuter little puns or something to say in advance. Shout out to Jay Frosting. Ooh, Jay Frosting, Alice misses going to chain restaurants with you. Um, yes. So that's the scoop. Let's paint the dog already. Let's see, I gotta pick the perfect size. Paint. Let's fucking paint! Let's effing paint. Okay, question for you guys. You guys, you guys watch Nana Land? I never saw it before until, you know, it was on TikTok all the time. You know, Nana Land with the cute little girl puppet and she goes to her grandma's house. Oh, I freaking love Nana Land. Oh, I think it's so fabulous. Oh, I just love it. You guys like Nana Land or what? I, of course, have been <laughs> researching Nana Land now that I know that I'm a fan of it. Oh, it's so damn cute. And it said that it was popular on Tumblr back in the day. So it was a Canadian children's show. And then, you know, big kids and young adults were into it on Tumblr. And now it's a TikTok sensation. And it's just, it's just a very heartwarming and funny kid show with puppets. And there's a dog puppet that looks a lot like Happy. And it's just a cute little girl and she's green and she goes to her Nana's house. And they have fun adventures and an emotionally safe and fun place for a child to be. I'm gonna turn down my heat. My heat is making too much noise, I think. I just want a second that Automatic should hire Alice to run Tumblr. Yeah, I agree.
today at beauty school, I took two clients. This one lady, I dyed her hair and gave her a gorgeous blowout. And then a little man came and I gave him a trim and he was adorable and he was wearing um, kind, of kind of granola clothes. He was wearing like beaded bracelets. He had a backpack from the Sierra Club. So I, of course, was asking him about his backpack from the Sierra Club. And he says, I give them money. So they gave me a backpack. The lady whose hair I dyed, she didn't like my teacher. And so some of the appointment was her complaining about my teacher and me being like, oh yeah, yeah, she stinks. Sorry about that, yeah, she stinks, yeah, it's messed up. But to be honest with you, I kind of didn't know what she was talking about. I was just yes anding her. And then afterwards, my teacher was like, what was she saying? And I was like, oh, she said she, 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 that you stink. <laughs> well, like she knew that she had offended her. And so she was asking me, come on, what'd she say? Was she talking shit about me? And I said, yes, duh. Emily's right that it's a weird move to be like, I don't like this teacher, so I'm going to get their hair done, or get my hair done by their student and then talk shit about them. Well, okay, so here's what she said. She said, okay, well, they gave me the client ticket, and so then I started walking over to, like, the reception area where... You go and you say, hello, is so-and-so here? Hi, so-and-so, I'm Mary. I'll be doing your hair. And so I started walking over there and they were like, no, 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 she's she's already in your chair. And I was like, oh, what? Mm, okay, whatever. And, uh, and my teacher was like, oh, she's mad at me. And I was like, okay. <laughs> and... Um, I chatted with the lady and then I went to go get the hair dye and the teacher was like, is she okay? Is she being rude to you? And I was like, no, wait, what? What's happening? And so then, you know, it was much, it was much like the movie Memento. I was trying to figure out what was going on and then I was getting the clues, you know, backwards and piecing it together. Um... Full disclosure, I've never seen the movie Memento, but so she was saying that she came in and she sat at like a different chair and was ready to get her hair done. And then I guess my teacher said, oh, no, 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 don't sit here. This girl's working on something else and then put her in my chair instead. And so she she didn't like the way that she was um, shuffled chair to chair. Something about my teacher's tone she thought was um, rude. I didn't see it for myself, so I, you know. It's much like Rashomon in that way. You know, I have the teacher's point of view. I have this lady's point of view. Much like Rashomon. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty 
pretty sure that's exactly what Rashomon is about, right? It's um, one of my favorite Simpsons jokes is when they go to Japan, and Marge goes, "Come on, Homer, Japan will be fun." You liked Rashomon, and Homer goes, "That's not how I remember it." <laughs> That, um, that reminds me of, oh, what's it called? You know, the, the clip show episode with Troy McClure. Um, and they have questions from, you know, he reads fan mail. And there's that one that says, like, why has Homer gotten stupider over the years? Um, then they show, like, clips, I think, of Homer kind of making more clever references in earlier episodes, and then eventually he just becomes, you know, a dough machine and a total fucking dummy. That episode also had a, a joke that I, I think about a lot, which is, which of these popular Simpsons characters died? And then it says, if you said Bleeding Gums Murphy and Marvin Monroe, you're wrong. They were never popular. <laughs> Single walk run. After school, I stayed for what's called makeup hours, which is, it's the same thing as detention. Um, what you remember detention being in your high school is what this is. And so you can just like hang out in a room and play on your phone or do whatever. Um, to make up hours that you are absent for to try to, you know, rack up make up hours and graduate a little earlier. And I I did befriend four other misfits. And so I was sitting with some pals and then the fire alarm went off and then we were all like, oh what the heck and so then we all went outside and it was freezing and so this one girl she um I was standing with these two gals so it's us three gals and then a fourth gal gets into her car and turns on the heat you know and she's in her car and then she motions for us to come in, come in my car. And we're like, okay. And we go in her car. And wouldn't you know it, she doesn't have a center console in her car. And where normally you would find a center console is a bong. Whoa. A bong in a car? What? So the, the entire center console was completely removed and that was in there, in the place of it. Uh, yes. And it was yeah. like part of the car or was it just sitting in the oh, car? Oh, no, it was, it was just there. Okay. That's just where it was. Um, and I thought that was such a funny thing to be in a car because of course, of course people drive stoned. I wasn't born yesterday. But I typically don't think of people having a 
bong in the car and doing bong riffs and also just like um I just feel like it would be easy to spill bong water all over your car <laughs> you know immediately that's a concern that comes to mind um so i gotta say i was pretty entertained by that it's definitely a bold choice it's a bold choice for sure I mean, I know I did, I did venture the, is it like incorporated into the car, but even just regularly in the car, like in that middle area, like having the center console removed to make space for it. You know, I think, or is it sorry, just... sorry. I, I, I might've, uh, I feel like I might've set, up, set it up in a confusing way. I think it was completely unrelated, coincidental. Okay that the center console didn't exist and that the bong was there. Um, you know, th the bong could have been anywhere. Bong could have been in the passenger seat. It just so happened to be where a center console would be um, traditionally. Okay. So that, that makes, I suppose that makes more sense. It's not yeah, the yeah, removed yeah. center console is dedicated, is a yeah. sign of the dedication that they have to that like car bong yeah. lifestyle. And then also, you know, would be hard to drive and rip a bong at the same time. So you'd really only be able to do it when parked. But I guess if you have your car parked at school all day long and you want to rip a bong, I guess maybe it makes sense for you. Or is it um, an amenity? for the passengers who get in the car. Oh, yeah, yeah. Also, you know, were you to get pulled over, I, I just don't think that would be like my go-to way to ingest weed. In high school, I once smoked hookah in a car. Okay. Great minds. Hanging out the passenger side, trying to holler at me. Yup. Now that's smart. Yes, like a funky gear shift. This is a common, common misconception. Makeup hours means making up. Making up for absent time it does not mean makeup as in cosmetics but confusing in a cosmetology school yes well do you guys want to play that game that we like to play i hope you're hungry for dinner Go ahead, guess what I ate today for dinner. It wasn't nothing and it wasn't oatmeal. It wasn't an omelet. It wasn't chicken tenty, it wasn't pizza, it wasn't spinach and artichoke dip. It wasn't ramen, it wasn't minestrone, it wasn't revenge, it wasn't tacos. It wasn't salad, 
It wasn't spite. It wasn't a torta. It wasn't Sprite. It wasn't beans. It wasn't noodles. It wasn't Christmas Cap and Crunch, but I'm intrigued. What is that? It wasn't ice cream or PB and J or rice. The crunch berries are little red and green stars. That sounds nice. Whoa, Chinese pizza is a pretty good guess. It wasn't quinoa and it wasn't corn. cauliflower it wasn't a stir fry it was scallion pancake and one other thing it wasn't tofu or pho or stir fry or orange chicken It was dumplings. It was a scallion pancake and dumplings. Great work. Speaking of great work, we got this viewer art from <gasps> CBC 9000, oh which is goodness. older viewer art, but they wanted to share it. Oh. Perfect for the theme. Perfect for the scene. Oh, that is damn fab. Look at those feathers. This is a poignant image. Those cracks. Very cool. That feeling when the image is poignant. Okay, this is a dog named Star, when you think about it. Speaking of a dog, <laughs> we also got this viewer art from Slappy oh, Phil. Or well, this is a sleepy oh. bear, but it's a mammal, much like a dog. Very cool. Those are great teeth. That is simply fab. This show pretty much has the most talented viewers in the world. If you ask me. No offense to all the other shows out there.
a lot of people out there they're saying that the morning show on Apple TV Plus that their fans are the most creative and talented but <laughs> it's no contest it's no contest this show and Mary Will Hands Painting Party has the most talented and creative viewers yeah, Harry, have you sorry. watched the morning show have I watched it no it's it's weird <laughs> Well, I've only seen clips that you've shown me. <laughs> That's true, yeah. Um, there's a new season, is that correct? Yeah, the new season kind of abandoned reality completely, and they introduce a new <laughs> plot, a season-long plot every episode, sometimes two in an episode. What? It's, it's basically become River, the Riverdale version of that show. Okay. So they'll just, like, move forward through time like crazy? Yes. Well, it's not even moving forward through time. It's just, it's just in the span of a week, um, like six things that would be a scandal or, or be big news happen all at the same time. Come on, give us an example. Um, so they have John Hamm playing a, a billionaire who's who's like halfway Elon Musk and halfway Jeff Bezos, and he's gonna he's going up in a, he's going up in a test flight in his rocket for the first time. And it's supposed to be Jennifer Aniston's character, but at the last minute she drops out, and then they send up uh, Reese Witherspoon's character instead. <laughs> like literally the morning of, they they change this. Okay. Um, there's also a season long plot. Uh, there's also a season long plot about how the network gets hacked, and and um, all of the um, all of their secrets get leaked. Oh, that is dumb as hell. And the and then um, the John Hamm character is going to buy their network, and so the deal falls through <laughs> on the same day that um, Reese Witherspoon's girlfriend discovers that her brother was at the January sixth insurrection, and she deleted footage of it of him to to hide the fact that he was there. Also on the same day that the Roe v. Wade decision gets leaked, so everyone is freaking out about everything. It seems odd. Um, I wouldn't picture the show to be so um, analogous to real life. Or I guess it seems like they kind of pick and choose. Because, like, why have January 6th exist in the world, but then have um, a fictionalized version of a Bezos character? Yeah. Yeah, it, it it a lot of it is is meant to be grounded in reality because like the first two seasons were around when COVID started, but then they kind of fast forwarded this one to this year. Stupid. They should let me make um, a show about a morning show. I I do um, a cooler job, I think, more tasteful. <laughs> Let me make a prestige drama about a morning show. I think I'd knock it out of the park. Would you require there to be at least one member of the cast of Friends in the in the regular cast? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Would you would you send Steve Carell the disgraced um, disgraced news anchor, their their Matt Lauer um, um, oh, oh, right. equivalent? Would you send them careening off the side of a cliff in Italy in a car? Yeah. I guess I would. <laughs> All right, maybe I don't need to make my version of the morning show. Sounds like they got it covered. You know, they say this Fargo show is so good. I've never seen it though. I remember watching the first season of Fargo and I think that was like 2016. Like, it was a long time ago. Let Mary make a hidden camera reality show. She'd knock it out of the prank. 
I think that would be fun. I do like the idea that you have a Friends cast member on your prestige morning show and it's Paul Rudd. Yeah. <laughs> Get me Paul Rudd, or if he's busy, Gunther. <laughs> Gotta get Gunther. So is this a plot device in the show, or is no? This a that was a, that scene? was a thing on the on the Good Wife. Um, okay. Uh, Juliana Margulies and the other actress's name, who I cannot remember. Um, by the end of the show, the two characters, the two actresses refused to be in the same room together. And so they have a scene where they're at a bar talking to one another. And it was very clearly like they filmed one side of it and they filmed the other side of it and then composited them together. Unbelievable. That's crazy. Juliana Margulies is also on The Morning Show. And that's all I'm going to say about that. Same. Uh, dumb world. What are these celebs? What are these celebs? A little dumb, wouldn't you say? Mary, are you upset that you didn't win Times Person of the Year again this year? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Alice, you're a Swifty. I am. I don't know. Do you give shit about her being the person of the year? Um, she's, de she's very much trying to be overexposed for some reason. Some people have theorized that there, she's trying to create the media, la the media environment that happened when her album reputation came out, which is after like the Kim and Kanye stuff and everyone hated her. And so she's, she's overexposing herself so that she can become hated and then she can release her own version of reputation again. But That's I don't know. Funny. That's quite a theory. Yeah, I mean, she got three covers. Um, Forrest, please find the photo of her where she looks like she looks like um, like your your the dream version of your college boyfriend. <laughs> it's from that same photo shoot. Let's see. You'll know it when you see it. Is it this one or is it? Uh -uh. One? Nope, it's a different one. Okay, okay, okay. It was. It wasn't one of the covers. Oh, okay, okay. Mary, if you had to have a, pr a prank show, would you want Impractical Jokers, Hidden um, um, hidden Camera, Crank Yankers, or Punked? Oh my god. Um, I think Impractical Jokers. Because, you know, they're out there having fun with real people at the mall. I think there's something... Um, Fun about that. It's, it's fun to see there it real is. There people. It is. Hello. Okay. She's a hunk. Uh huh. Yeah, I think it's more fun to see regular people at the mall being like, what the fuck? As opposed to, um, you know, like, Justin Timberlake being like, my car! <laughs> <laughs> Not cool, that's my car. But you know what is cool? 
Frank Yankers. <laughs> and viewer art. This is Butts wow. Vanities. <laughs> a star is born. And this is beautiful. Now, if that's not celestial seasonings, I don't know what is. <laughs> wow, a lot of good art tonight. Oh, we also got this from Single Walk Run. Oh, that's very nice. You know, I've been drinking more tea lately. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's true. It's good. It's delicious. Well, someone you might have seen on the, the, the box of the tea is the subject of this embroidery oh, by Noah. That's darling. Oh, what I wouldn't give for a nice sleep cap like that. Okay, I have a question. So you know how like in movies like I guess it happens in real life too but I think of it as a movie thing when people are on a date and then they're like heading back and then they say so how about a nightcap a nightcap means like a drink right <laughs> I think it's I think it's meant to mean come to my apartment for a drink. And does yeah, it I think that's right. Mean alcohol or can it mean just hang out? Does it specifically... Um I think it's meant to be I think it's meant to be alcohol. And is it a specific kind of alcohol or it could be any alcohol? I don't know. cuz like I don't think it's like an aperitif where it's like a post meal drink. Apparently, it's like any drink before bedtime, like either a small alcoholic drink or like warm milk, something that supposedly promotes good sleep. Interesting. I want that milk. Should I end all my dates inviting my inviting the other person to back to my house for a glass of warm milk? Slushy you could also seasoning sleigh ride cookie dough tea. I'm intrigued, and even though you say it's terrible, I must have it. It really wasn't good. <laughs> well, apparently, Ovaltine in 1930 promoted itself as the world's best nightcap to ensure sound, natural sleep. So you could also end all your dates inviting them back to your place for a nice glass More of Ovaltine. Ovaltine, please. I had, I, had this, I had the idea that we should start spreading the rumor that George Santos was the kid in A Christmas Story. <laughs> Ooh. God, what a weirdo, right? Yes. <laughs> yeah, duh. <laughs> no, I just mean, it's it's one of those things where he's it, he was like intentionally trying to be weird, so I feel kind of bad just saying yes. Mm -hmm. He kind of scares me. <laughs> yeah. There was the one day where he was just walking around with a baby in in, in the halls of Congress. Yes. Wait, the, he said, is that your baby? He said, not yet.
did inviting people back for a nightcap start did that have start happening in tv because it was a real thing or did it did people start doing it because it was on tv Oxford reference has uh, has cites the use of nightcap to refer to an alcoholic drink back in 1818. Okay. All and so it originally right. was strictly alcohol, like a pint of table beer or ale if you make it for a nightcap from the table Cook's Oracle. Beer? What the and hell? Then the Oh, an ad for Ovaltine is apparently the first reference to a non-alcoholic nightcap. Mm. I had a friend growing up who... Okay, someone's obsessed with The Simpsons. We really had sort of a Simpsons and Flanders dynamic happening. Um, I think I kind of resented this friend for, um, you know, her life and her family being, uh, you know, better. <laughs> you know, like they like went to church and um, like ate dinner as a family and stuff like that. And I was like, la di da. And, um,. I feel like just like everything about her triggered me and was like babyish and that like exactly the kind of thing that like Homer hates Flanders for and I remember one of the things of like going to her house and being like I want chocolate milk and her mom being like we only have Ovaltine because Ovaltine has Essential vitamins and nutrients added to it. We don't have junk. <laughs> Do you want oval? To and I was like, Ugh. <coughs> who the fuck has oval teen? You're, oh, of course you'd have oval teen. I kind of had my own version of that where my cousin, like my uncle's family, there was a, their son was kind of like that. He was kind of like, like the like overachiever. Um, mm -hmm. like he was an Eagle Scout and then he went to medical school and oh, they would, duh. and I remember my grandma would always, would always say she would bring over a bag of candy for them, like, like a bag of M&Ms and the parents would give the, give him one M&M out of the bag. <laughs> what? Uh -huh. Yeah. And, um, yeah, we'd be in the mom's car the mom would put on like radio disney and i'd be like oh my god just put on normal radio god, stop it and oh i remember <laughs> okay stuck with me much um we're listening to the radio, and the mom didn't put on Radio Disney. She put on FM. It, you know, must it must have been CBS FM or Q104. And Billy Joel, Only the Good Die Young, came on. And you guys know this song. It's real poppy. You know, you might have heard I'd run with a dangerous crowd. We ain't too pretty, we ain't too... I mean, this is a real toe tapper poppy cheese song and this gal's mom she said um like oh, i hate i hate this song this is a terrible song and she like changed the channel and she was like can you can you believe that they'd have a song on the radio that's just anti-catholic like that 
and I was like, bitch. I was seven in the back of the car, like, bitch, are you for real right now? Well, apparently Only the Good Die Young is a, a song about, um, you know, he's trying to bed a Catholic girl and, um, and she doesn't do premarital sex and he's like, come on, come on. Um, and so, uh, this woman found it very offensive. Yeah. You Catholic girls start much too late. I'd rather laugh with the sinners than die with the saints. The sin is a much more. But th this is a cheese ball musical theater type song. This is not, you know, this is really not something to cause a ruckus about it being um, unjust towards Catholics. Sinners are much more fun, says Slappy Phil. Of course, we're all too busy toe-tapping. <laughs> I do remember when Billy Joel drove into a house. Yes, the Pope is cool. I have heard this. I keep tabs on the Pope. Pope tabs. Pope tabs. Woo! Life is like a hurricane in the Vatican. Do da do da dee dee dee. Keeping Pope tabs. I may not do stream or rewrite history. Pope taps, woo! You know, I keep meaning to put some, put some stuff on TikTok, like clips from the Mary Morning Show and Enchanted Pumice and stuff like that. I think, oh, I, sh I just need to rip some vids and edit some short clips. I simply ought to do that. Thank you, Alice.
Mary Houlihan's Little Morning was that was really fun. I remember watching it when it was coming out, and I think Steve Harvey was on. It's true. Star is looking beautiful. I think I'm gonna have to finish Star over the weekend. Oh, you know what? I should show you folks before we all go to bed. I should show you my Christmas tree. Okay, cabin adventure, here we go. Cabin Adventure! Cabin Adventure! Okay, let's untangle this. And then, and then we're off. Whoa! Okay, so here's my cabin. There's Star. Ooh. Okay. Oops. There's Happy. Hello. That's right, Happy was right there the whole time. Very shy. And there's the tree. Isn't it marvelous? Stitch. Well, oh, of course he'll wear a sweater. Mm, 
this in the other room. He has one that has uh, a snowman on it and some other choices. Everybody get into bed, no matter what time zone you're in. Okay, good. <laughs> well, okay, I guess you guys could stay up if you want to play Nintendo. <laughs> oh no, thank Lenny. Happy Hanukkah, everybody. Thank you, potatoes. Good night, everybody. Thank you, Forrest and Alice, for producing the show. Thank you, everybody, for making such terrific art and hanging out in the comments. It was a total blast. Honk shoe, honk shoe. See you next week. Goodbye. Good night.